everyone and uh, welcome to the second webinar by Amakove Wala and the webinar is all about financial literacy and we are continuing a conversation that had been started last week by Ruben Kimani. He's the CEO of Username. Username is a financial institution that uh, uh, sells us real estate, basically plots, maguta maguta. So you can check them out. We had a recording of the first session, which was uh, generally about investments. And we are on for today, really looking forward. We had a very engaging session last time. And uh, so it's the same speaker. Ruben has a very vast CV. I will not go through it again. But currently, the hat that he's wearing is the CEO of uh, Username Investment uh, Properties. But today's topic, so we are going, this uh, month of April, we're going to cover investments. And today's topic is tips on how to select the best investments in 2024. So this year has um, seen a couple of um, changes. We are in February. I know last year was very, very tough for many of us, but we want to say that how can we make the best of the situation as a country? So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Ruben Kimani. So Ruben Kimani last week took us on uh, just the overview of financial investments. And today the topic is on tips to select the best investments in 2024. So over to you, Ruben Kimani. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ali. And uh, it's good to have you on board today uh, in this uh, webinar. Uh, I wanted to say what we did last time. We were trying to introduce uh, this topic of uh, smart investing. I was saying is, uh, this is a word that is out there in the streets. Everyone is talking about working smart. No one wants to work hard. And also investing smart. What does it mean? And that's what you we were trying to introduce last time. We talked about a few things. And I wanted everyone, and I hope you can hear me clearly. I wanted everyone to clearly define. Let me adjust this so that uh, you can see me clearly. I wanted everyone to clearly define what money means to them. Because we are talking about financial investment today. What does money mean to you? Uh, what does investing mean to you? You define your why. Why do you need money? There are so many reasons. Peace of mind, freedom. Uh, there are those who will talk about uh, uh, retire. Uh, there are those who will talk about um, uh, things like I want to travel the world. There are all those things. Please define your why. And everyone is different. We also say it is very personal. So uh, my, my financial goals are very personal. They are different from yours. You get them to an kitu, leave them alone because that is personal for them. So you really need to define that. You also talked about really acquiring knowledge so that you really know what to invest every time you have money. And we said financial literacy uh, is basically that particular science or art of having knowledge such that every time you have money, you can be able to tell where to put that money. Assuming you have 10,000 or 5K, where do you put that money to get maximum gain? That is financial literacy. You basically understand all the options that are there and you choose the very op best option depending on your objectives and the circumstances at hand. Come as I, there are markets that have really have gone down like uh, Nairobi Stock Exchange. So there are so many questions to ask yourself. Is it the best time to invest? We also have real estate which have been affected here and there. We have finance bill. So when you are that literate, you are able to know where to put your money, where to invest any given time. So for me, that is smart investing. It starts with financial literacy. And you even said, in this webinar, I may not be able to cover everything. And that's why I was saying, you can look for... There are people and farms which are training people on financial literacy out there. Uh, maybe one, two, or three weeks, you do one hour per day, and you'll be good. You really thank me for uh, that uh, piece of information. Please go look for it. Um, we're talking about the art of smart investing. 
uh, and I hope I've not forgotten anything. I also gave a story about username investment. Started 10 years ago. And some of the things that really helped us, because I'm not alone in the business, is the fact that um, I remember I took the biggest loan I could get uh, that time from National Bank. That is, uh, the, the interest rate were quite fair. Uh, and I did that because we needed a lot of capital. I had saved some good money and I also was in the circle. So some of these financial instruments and vehicles are very important for different purposes. You might be here and you also want to uh, transition to business from employment. Now this, this can really help you uh, as this can be one of those whys I'm talking about, one of the objectives that make you uh, want to understand why you're investing. Your why should be very strong. And today we are talking about uh, 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 <clears throat> we are talking about tips uh, that can help you select the best investments, right? Uh, and that's what we are saying. We started by defining uh, what um, uh, investing means uh, and it is very important because people use very big words in the financial market and you are not able to understand my work is possibly to digest i've experienced some of these things and also tell you quite a number of things i don't know where you can go back to the first two slides uh, dr Ali, i don't know um uh, if it's it's my screen Can you go to the first slide and the second one? Okay. Uh, uh, yes, yes. I wanted you to go to the first and the second slide. All right, okay, so all right. Yeah, yeah, I wanted just to highlight that because uh, for the benefit of those who have just joined us, we highlight that uh, very fast, some of the things we are doing so that we tell you some of those tips. I uh, wanted to say why it is important uh, to invest right. I talked about being very strategic, meaning that every time you have money, you know where you can get the best return, uh, uh, which assets to invest in, and also talk about uh, investing from a point of information, a point of knowledge. That's what we are doing today. And uh, I also tied the importance of investing right uh, to the reason you are, you are why. Why are you uh, looking for uh, cash, money, um, funds? Why do you want to create wealth? Why, why are you looking for riches? There must be a strong why. If you don't have a strong why, every time you have money, you waste it because you don't have a very good uh, reason for having that money. That's why you will find even there are people who can make so much of wealth, then they give it away, depending on their different whys, right? So define yours so that as you work very hard, you know why you are doing it and it will keep you uh, in the right path. And uh, being, it requires a lot of discipline and you need it. I think we can keep moving. And the next thing we are talking about is the types of uh, uh, investments. Uh, we can go to the next uh, slide. Uh, the types of investment we have. This is very, very important. Uh, that slide is very, very important. Allow me to go very fast. I was talking about the estate as number one. That's what most Kenyans understand. And that's why people invest in their droves. Uh, they keep saying 90% of millionaires in the world are made or manufactured in real estate, right? It's that powerful. Real estate is easy to understand. And I have written there, real estate is usually medium risk, factoring a country like uh, ours. It's medium risk, but high return. But I also talked about selected real estate, whether you are buying land, whether you are buying a building, these are apartments, residential, commercial, retail. Um, even those who are doing Airbnbs, they are also in real estate. Uh, what I mean, you need to select something called selected um, real estate. This is, uh, it means that part of real estate that can give you the highest return. Apparently, that is usually land, but not all pieces of land will give you the highest return. 
Uh, we have sold properties in Gong and specifically in Nakuru, which has tripled in value in the last five years. That's what I called selected real estate because people are building the basic and the fundamentals were right. What are these fundamentals? These are basically those factors that influence appreciation of property. This is population urbanization. Those things are important. That's why all of us are coming to Nairobi. You see a place that is starting to grow around Nairobi. That's a place to invest. That's called selected real estate and username. We are very good in that. We keep looking for such places. You come to us. Land can give you 25%. I know right now the bonds are giving us 17%, which is uh, quite quite good. I also know that if you go to circle the returns there, the returns in the bank in the fixed deposit, the Ukomakina, 7% money market, I think is going to 10, 12% at the moment. See, so that's why I'm saying real estate becomes so easy for most people. But you also need to understand the others because at every given point or instance, there are times you need to invest in bonds. And I'm going to cover that very fast. And if you have questions today, please, you may be preparing it. I know uh, Akove, Dr. Ali is also uh, uh, taking care of that. You have questions, you can be preparing them so that we engage properly. Talk up, please leave when you have just that one thing that you can run with this year and possibly be able to change your, your financial landscape and be able to achieve something that maybe you have never achieved. Yeah, that, yeah, we have mutual funds. Uh, this is also a big one. These are professionally managed uh, pool of investors' money. These are funds that are managed as a pool. And that's why you are when you are buying uh, something like insurance. Insurance is not an investment. I want to disappoint many. Insurance is basically for managing risk. Ukinunua insurance, you are not investing. <laughs> People make that mistake a lot. You see, uh, you may actually be susceptible to marketing and stuff like that. You say insurance, please forgive me here. Yeah? But I know insurance is for covering. Uh, it's for managing risk. But what companies have done, they usually have packages that cover, um, they'll cover you for insurance, but they're also covering some other aspects. Uh, but your work is to understand why you are investing, that you still need insurance. And actually, all of us do. You have vehicle, medical, and all many others for your children. You still don't need those things. And I hope I'm not selling for someone. But you don't need them for investment. You need them for managing risk. Uh, that is very important. I just deviated a bit. But uh, mutual funds are basically people who professionally, not people, these are fa uh, farms that are uh, licensed by government to ma manage your funds, then they give you a return, right? And there are quite a number you can invest in them. I've written their all these scroll returns. Your money will have almost an assured return, but it will be very low. Like if you invest in bonds directly with the government, you get that uh, infrastructure bond. I think they open another one in February. I think, I don't know the rate, but I know it is more than 17%. But if you go to a mutual fund, which specifically, and they are quite a number, I mean, that's why I'm saying, please do financial literacy training because I can't cover that now. There are those that are geared towards investing in certain investment vehicles. In as in a newer stocks, in as a bond, stocks are very high risk. So it depends on which one you are buying. But most of the time, your returns are sure. There are those precious metals are not spend so much time in that. Uh, gold, I don't think that is very popular in a country like ours. In a silver, in a platinum, these are commodities that are traded uh, globally. There's a reason to buy them. I don't want to focus so much there. I want to go to stocks. Uh, this precious metal, in my own uh, research, these are medium risk, medium returns. For stocks, they are high risk, high return. You need to understand that. And I think that's what scares most people because you can't invest in something that you don't understand. Stocks are much more difficult to understand as compared to real estate. But if you are very good in it, I think you should put your money there. And they will tell you very clearly, uh, if you are starting to invest in stock, please invest in what you can comfortably lose. You don't take a loan to invest in stock or your money that you have. They actually tell you this percentage so that when you lose it, you will not stop paying rent. Uh, buying, uh, uh, um, uh, paying for your school fees and living the normal life, right? But if you understand clearly, please go there. 
high risk, high rewards. Like for example, I'll give a share like Safaricom, which was 45 shillings, I think uh, one year and so ago. But right now I think it's trading at 13 shillings and something. Imagine that loss. Uh, if you are someone who really, and we'll talk about risk levels, that can really stress you. And you, if you put all your money there, you can lose all of it. There's a reason why stocks are there. And if people still get well over them. These are, these are, this thing of art, a lot talk so much about it, not very popular in our country. This is through this growth return because uh, in a country like ours, I'm looking at the capability, but it is big business elsewhere. You should not be limited to a country uh, like Kenya only. You can be out there, but it's good to understand this is also an option. Let me finish with bonds because the government has been issuing bonds. You may hear treasury bills, bonds, uh, and many other terms, right? <laughs> I don't know how to define them at the moment, but what they do, of course, you lend money to government, and they usually give very handsome rates, especially now when they are looking for a lot of money. Bonds are known to be low risk, by the way. Uh, since 1963, I think the government has never been defaulted on uh, There is a lot of discussion on that. They have never defaulted on bonds. And put your money there and people keep making very good returns uh, where bonds are concerned. And actually, I'll make this comment, and I know to be true, those who buy bonds, you have a better return than those who build flats. I leave that to be something for the... And that's why you need financial literacy. For those who have some good money, people put 100 million in a, uh, an apartment block uh, for rent somewhere, maybe in Ruaka, Keno. But if you put the same money in bonds at 17%, you can, you can actually double your return. Most people don't know because they have not invested in financial and investment interest. And that's what we are doing today. And for, for that particular reason, uh, you might find that somebody would have gone to bonds. But remember, we have different ages, different objectives, and that's why it is the way it is. Let's go to the next slide, and I hope it's the second last. I'll take the shortest time possible so that we have more time today to possibly answer questions that might be there. And this is also a discussion we are sharing. I know we have friends here who might be very good in different areas, including this matter of finances. You may have something that you may comment and it can help someone in this webinar on this discussion, right? Uh, yeah. Factors that influence uh, investment decisions very fast. Uh, um, this can be your financial plans, and I hope you do this, and it has to be written. You cannot, uh, and this is usually a very common mistake. I don't know whether it's Africa or so. People don't think, put things into writing. It is very important to put things into writing so that you commit. Even when you are praying, I think you can pray for something that um, you have put down as a list somewhere so that you can have visibility and you can be able to think. I hope you have financial plans. It determines your investment decision. Is it short term? Is it medium term? Is it long term? The rate of inflation also can also be able to uh, influence. Inflation is very high at the moment, not just in Kenya, all over the world. For most government, they are grappling with it. And it is very important to understand that it can influence which decisions that you want to make. Whether you want to put your money in land, in bonds, in the bank, which is very dangerous, this is a matter of liquidity, and this is also very important, depending at what stage you are in your life. There are people who want to retire. Liquidity is very important at retirement. If you have only plots of land and you are retiring, I think that is a challenge, right? Because liquidating a, 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 a real estate asset is quite a challenge, right? You still need them, but not all of them. You need some money somewhere where you can be able to draw uh, at that point, maybe medical bills, emergency, and all those kinds of things. Basically, you need liquidity because you are retired. You need money every month, right? And uh, this is something you have had people who have serious parcels of land, serious assets. But if they get, they have a lot of assets. It's a matter of understanding at where you are so that you know which decisions to be able to make. Um, this is also the matter of risk. I've talked about this. You have to understand your risk levels, and uh, this is also very important. There are people who cannot sleep if they were to lose 5,000 shillings. So <laughs> you need to understand your risk levels. Are you risk averse? Are you a risk taker? You can even do a chart. 
in a scale of 1 to 10 where are you so that you know come on when you are share this like cryptocurrency are very high risk right they even tell you, you cannot afford to put more than 5% of your net worth or your monthly income in crypto because you can lose all of it right understand your risk levels to know how far you can go and which investment are safe for you peace of mind is actually wealth by itself that's why once you understand your risk levels you can be able to put money in a place where you'll not be worrying every single day uh, of course there is financial knowledge and experience are you knowledgeable that you also in friends the more knowledgeable you get the easier is it for you uh, to be able to invest let's go to the last slide and that's the most important i hope uh, you can take a sip of water uh, a sip of, of uh, coffee or tea so that we understand each other here we can go to the last slide then we have questions um let's let's, let's go there is it showing yeah not yet uh okay. there I hope you, you can hear me yes I think it's there. There you go. Okay. Ah, uh, this is the last slide so that we don't give many many stories. Um and I really want us to take uh some some keen attention here. We are talking about tips for selecting the best investment. What I've done here, I thought about it because there are so many tips. And I was trying to organize this in a way that it is so easy to understand. Like for example, If you look at a normal Kenyan today even the government has debt right there are so many things that are happening of course you have your own bills uh, and needs and you'll find there are people who have debts uh money that they need to pay it can be bank it can be sacco it can be tala and all those things there are people who don't have emergency funds and i think most Kenyans don't have that's why we have to keep fundraising fundraising is not bad by itself But when I've gone to the west and uh, we, we go there to meet our customers in the aspan there are customers who might be here and people especially our zungus get shocked they hear you are fundraising that's not their culture then they understand insurance maybe we need to change our ways right so it is very very important so I've tried to really organize this I'm assuming somebody you have debt you don't have emergency fund ata ujaanza ku invest you don't even have saving where do you start and i've tried to mix it with some of the tips that are i think are important let me go very fast uh, there's no guaranteed best in investment that anyone can have by the life in my own view is usually trial and error you have to try many things and see what works for you right even in finances is the same kuna vitu utajaribu and that that's why you need this knowledge to know to what extent you can try you cannot go borrowing uh, so much money in the bank to just put it in a certain share we risk here up on there it is going well you need to understand the fundamentals of buying shares and you need to start small so that you manage your risk so ni me mix the juliza if you are in trouble you don't have uh, that fund you, yeah, you don't have emergency fund uh you have loan you have what you have not invested hata ujui kununua shamba ni nini stock where do you start so let me share these tips is that you have to define your investment goal right draw a personal financial roadmap for most people they do this every year but as, like i shared last time personally i'm convinced the best way to do it do for your life julie what do you need to do with this life where finances are concerned as big as it it may be as shocking as it may be to you maybe you want to you might actually want to to own a, a yacht out there right maybe a, a private jet as big as it can get depending on your dreams it might not even be material as such there are people who want to have a certain level of influence please define that and uh, a, a road map is a path it's not the head goal you can define your goals and you have to define how, how you want to get there and we are saying we need to write you can look for professionals there are people who are personal financial advisors 
uh, and you listen it together that I'm correctly. Not everyone there to call themselves like that and they are selling on one now financial product. Someone like a someone who does that, they can be able to guide you for a small fee. Please define your investment goal. It is also define your why. We started there. The second thing I believe is important. You need to analyze your income, expenses, and assets. Because even as we speak today, there are people who have a lot of assets. Maybe they need to liquidate some of them, uh, depending on where you are in life, and maybe have some level of liquidity and leave other assets as uh, as a uh, tangible asset. P- things like land, things like uh, houses and stuff like that. You didn't need to analyze. This is taking audit. I believe that is another tip. Very, very important of what you already have. At what point are you? Now at work on Amadeni, you need to write things this down. It's an emergency fund. Number three, you need to do your research to ensure that you are knowledgeable, right? And that's why in this session, and this is not enough for most of us, and not lie to you. Go out there. This is just to introduce you to this world. Look for information about financial literacy that is tailored to a country like ours. Some of them are in the U.S. It might not apply to you. Um, we have organizations that are doing that. You can online, you can apart and choose for the best, and you pay. Whether that money you pay is so small compared to the millions you lose. I, I had the, we have 60, how many billions in uh, unclaimed finance, uh, financial authority? Uh, and I wonder, who are these people? Of course, there are those, unfortunately, who have passed away, but there are those people who would benefit from that money, but they are not. That is also part of financial training. Unajua, uh, one day I'll not be here and I need to have a will, to have a trust. And of course, in Kenya, we are afraid of many things. We have those. And when you do these trainings, it will remove those notions, those fears that people have. Would you rather believe someone, especially when you talk about will, this is a challenging, somebody challenged me, and I can also share depending on your view, would you rather be afraid of all those um, all those um, opinions and views about wills, about trust, and all those things? Uh, especially those who are actually, or would you rather be afraid of what happens if you are not here and your children are suffering? You have to choose one. There are people on Europa, Ukiadika, and all those African traditions. I think financial literacy helps you get away from that. Number four, you need to set realistic expectation on returns. Of course, uh, the reason we have pyramid schemes, especially in Kenya, uh, all over the world they are there. We are not peculiar as such, and, and I think we don't need to beat ourselves. But uh, Kenya, I think we are leading, especially in Africa, or together in Nigeria. We are hardworking people, and that's why. Uh, the reason we have is because people have serious expectations. I know someone was telling me some investment when they were telling me at, I can get 1% every single day. Banks, these are people, these are financial uh, enterprises that have been there for 100 years. These people, no, they trade with money. That is, that is their business. They don't do such things because they understand. So these are scams. If you are getting any return that is so high, be very afraid, higher than what a normal market gives. Be very worried. Not to say that it can be possible, but that risk is too high. Don't put all your money there. If you are to put 5% in all these pyramid schemes and you are left with the rest, I think that one cannot finish you. Seek professional guidance. That is number five. From experts, people who understand financial literacy. And they are out there. Please vet them. Not everyone who is in TikTok, uh, in Facebook, in social media can give you professional advice, but there are those people who are really grounded and they'll give you all the option to take you through, but you have to pay them higher. Number six, and this is where we t- start taking action, you need to pay off consumption loans. There are different types of uh, credit facilities that you may have. Some of them you took because of investment. For me, that is okay. You started a business that is giving returns. That loan is doing the right thing. But if it's a consumption loan, and you know what I'm talking about, maybe including vehicles that are not necessarily for investment or income generation purposes, you need to start paying that loan very fast. 
as the first thing. And that's why we say to find an audit. Would you any what you have, what you don't have, people have some land like you can alone. So is yet our meogeza, the rates are at 20%. Somebody did an amortization and was somebody is paying almost double the amount they borrowed. That is a very high cost of loan. You need to understand that so that you know instead of borrowing five million and I pay ten million. I think I would rather liquidate some of my investments that I may not need much. I pay this loan instead of giving the bank, if you are a banker, sorry, another five million. That's their profit, right? Those are things that you may need to know. Pay off consumption loan. Number seven or eight, you need to create an emergency fund. Not very common in Africa. I think we depend on our, uh, by the way, our insurance, our emergency fund, uh, our financial roadmaps. It's our people, our relatives, our friends. It's not a bad thing. This is Ubuntu, this is Africa, and it is very good. But I think it's also something that I would not say is progressive because you make it very difficult. There's an issue of black tax. I think it has been covered a lot, and we suffer from that. And if you are to be well-educated, most people would start doing the right things very early to avoid a situation where you need a lot of support from people. But God forbid, sometimes you find yourself in this situation. I know uh, life is not a straight line. You may do everything possible, but still fail. But if you are trying, most likely you'll be able to succeed. Aya, ah, yeah. number seven, eight, be aware of scams, get rich quick, see these are pyramid schemes by acquiring knowledge. The reason we have scam is because people are not well enlightened, right? And that's why you're in this uh, session. And please keep doing many others. Uh, the other one is you start small and invest regularly. Assuming you have an emergency fund, you have paid your consumption loans, you have already done your planning and all those things. I think the next thing is to start investing and you start small. Don't start very big. Starting small is basically for learning purposes. Answer pole pole, even when you're coming to use a name, you may have so much money, but I will tell you for a fact, I think it's better. Kuja ununue shamba moja, bili, max. Then you start from there so that you understand how real estate works. Same, especially for other markets like stock market. You really need to start small so that you understand. A share can come, can, you can buy at 20 today and tomorrow it is at 17 shillings. And you have put a lot of money. In a day, you can do so much money and it can really shock you, right? Start small. Uh, ensure your returns are higher than the prevailing inflation. This is the essence of investment. Any return you get should always be higher than the inflation. I checked inflation for January. I think it's at 7.65%, right? Any investment that is giving you lower than that, you are losing your money. And that's why I like real estate for most of the reason and it i'm not talking about rental i talked about selected in the state i will be, will be another time to talk about rentals maybe not here you can go to my youtube channel i talk about these things a lot we, and you can go do your math by the way i will challenge people to go do their math because all of us can be able to do that once you do your math you realize there are places where if you have a million shillings you can actually make a, another half a million in a very short time compared to other places that are traditionally known. Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket to diversify. That's the importance of this education to tell you, like assuming I'll give an example of someone who is 60 years and they are baby want to retire, right? Um, the reason I'm saying diversification is important. I would expect them to have some money in bonds, uh, some money in money market. I've not even talked about money market. Money market is a, a temporary place to store your money when it's gaining some returns. Yeah, it, money market is like a bank account. It's better than putting your money in the bank. But if you have money in the bank, you are losing an opportunity to make like 10 to 12% per year, especially if you have some good money. You might can earn a lot. What I'm saying, uh, if you are 60, now you can mashamba, you can rentals, Maybe you don't have, you might not even have an emergency fund. You need to start there. And also ensure that some money is liquid. You need to be receiving some good money that can maintain you every month. You want to go for holidays and stuff like that. I've seen some people who are retired, they save. They receive money, they have rentals, they receive money, they save like, say like 20 
thousand every month so that at the end of the year they do an holiday so that they continue living the same same life but they can you live the same life uh, you are living when you retired the same life you are living like right now assuming you retire in the next five years the answer is no you need to start working hard right now so be very patient and be very disciplined and the last thing you need to keep learning and that's what you are doing today keep learning so that you improve your knowledge once you know all the options where you can put your money uh for young people maybe people uh, this is a formula that is used uh, assuming uh in kenya young is 35 uh, i can even say even if less than 50 years most of the time maybe you should gear your investment toward slightly higher risk higher risk investment can double because i've seen people who put all their money into money market and uh, and bonds what happens is that you lock that money for a very long time these bonds can be 20 years eh? that money cannot grow the only thing you are getting is returns and that's why we you are advised to buy land or buy uh, stocks so that your money can double right in plots money double or triples and you know that to be true so you didn't need to do your equation if you are young i think you are better placed investing in assets that can give you what is called capital gain more than interest or dividend dividend is for for businesses more than interest or anything uh, that that is um, a return capital gain is the biggest return and the younger you are the better you are to invest in assets that are going to give you capital gain as you get older towards retirement now you look for investment that can give you monthly income you keep liquidating some of them that balance is important you still need assets like land but you keep liquidating but if you are young less than 50 i think it is important to put your money in assets that can grow in value or double in value and that is land for you these are buildings uh, most some of them don't but they still do and these are stocks and things like uh, i'll not share crypto today is out of topic and i would actually advise most people not to do it not because it is not possible because the risk is too high and you need to have a very high level of understanding before you put your money there start with what is working at the moment before you go to the unknown so i think that is uh the end of my presentation i've taken too long but if you have a question i'll be happy to answer uh and possibly someone has picked something that can help them thank you so much for your time and for your ears I think we can go back to uh, Dr. Ali. Thank you so much, Ruben. Uh, allow me not to turn off my video because the light is very, very poor where I am. But thank you for giving us tips because these are just um, an overview of what to look out for with various types of uh, investment options. So we don't have uh, much time. We have like ten minutes, uh, like five minutes, to the end of the hour. But we had questions coming from our live stream. Uh, we have an appreciation from an anonymous attendee from the Zoom webinar, where we the person is saying thank you for this very insightful session. Any comment on Mansa, and then from the Facebook. From the Facebook comments, there were a couple of comments that are touching on how to go about a CDS account. And then uh, one more question around the tips on investing in, in uh, let me just check it again. Um, so there were two or three questions about bonds and opening a CDS account. And then what makes art a low risk, low return? Thank you. Uh, thank you for those questions. I think I'll answer them uh, very fast. For some of them, uh, I really would like to refer people because these are process issues. Um, things like opening, if like you open an MTSA account, a bank account, money market account, a CDS account, I think. But then you need all those. They are called tool sets. You need all those accounts to be able to do investments. And uh, when I did my literacy training, 
that is some of the things you do a checklist una kisha you have the most basic of them have a money market you have enough you know cds account is opened uh in cbk right now they have an app uh what is the name of that uh it is called dao uh dao csd or something like that yes 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 uh the experience yes. that yeah, they are allowing yes. people to uh i think you you, you are breaking they are allowing uh, kenyans to be able to open accounts online but what i know is that um, you had to go to central bank in person right to go and open those accounts but right now they are allowing uh, guys to do things online and i think uh, i find that to be something that is very helpful even money market accounts you also open online so i'd invite someone to open that app but uh, for you to gain uh, enough because i may not be able to give you step by step on how to do it uh, i usually refer someone to go look for and I, actually if you go online they have that faq go to cbk website right and i would like to say this because this question was asked last time anytime you are looking for information about financial markets please go for to the right sources they are now information out there if it's about opening uh, that account of course when you go you'll find our manner of for sharing but uh, i think it's good to go to the source go to cbk website they'll be able to explain you to do step by step you can call their number sometimes i hear this government and people are afraid they might not pick your calls but my experience with the kina cbk these are serious parastatos i think they take their work as tightly more seriously they'll be able to guide you on exactly how to do that so that you can start that journey but if you have not done some level of uh, and there are so many trainings that are in bits you can learn about bonds trading treasury bills stock trading circles separately look for those very short courses and please do them so that uh, even before you open that account you understand how bonds markets work so that you make you can actually make a decision just one piece of information can help you save especially if you are working with millions save millions of money even if it's 10000 and you're investing 20 or 30000 that's a lot of money so please invest in training before you even uh, try to invest there it will save you a lot of hassle and possible losses um i think i forgot the other question you may repeat um yeah the other question was about Oh, you had a, co- a comment about yeah. excellent I, i think i remember now i talked about art uh, and uh, it is in the context of uh, a developing country like kenya right i don't think we appreciate art is a this is a matter of demand and supply of course you go to some malls you find there are people who like art in kenya i'm not saying they are not people. but uh, compared to some other nations we are not that very serious with that so you see the power of demand and supply if something is not in high demand what happens to uh, the other mathematics uh, possibly if the demand is not there and that's why i was talking about being role return right uh, but i also know that you can invest uh, online um uh, about art uh, and that my change the equation Uh, out there i was talking the context of a country like ours not something that is so developed for those who would like to invest in it or offshore out there i think you also need to do some level of training to understand how those markets work so that you know how to make money from those investment and what amount of risk you are taking knowing the amount of risk you are taking in the investment for me is very very important before i put my money there If it's very high risk i know i have to reduce the amount of money i'm putting there right and that's why you'll find uh, people will tell you things like crypto people those people who are really virgin crypto is not bad by the way it's only that is very high risk i remember this time uh elon musk invested a billion dollars in a certain uh, crypto 
and uh, it was big news and people are using it. But how much is he worth? That is a drop in the ocean for him. If he lost all that money, it means nothing to him. He will not lack sleep. So you cannot compare to him and put all your money there. And that's why for art, I would say the same thing. Please go and understand out there. But I was talking this in the context of a developing country like Kenya. Thank you, thank you. Please just briefly, because we have three minutes over time, briefly comment about Mansa. Uh, I think there are a couple of questions on that. All right, all right, all right. And I think that question was asked last time. There are many uh, organizations and tools that are being out there. Some of them are Kenyan, some of them are international. Some of them are marketed aggressively, right? And my comment was very simple. Um, I may not be able to know uh, many things about that platform, but what I know what is important in financial markets as a way of managing risk, ensure that particular organization or the platform, these are licensed by the relevant authority. Uh, we are talking about, um, we have Central Bank of Kenya for all the banks, but we have Capital Markets Authority, right? You really need to ensure that you're investing with an organization that is licensed by Capital Markets Authority or check the relevant authority that uh, regulates that particular space, uh, even if it's a platform. For international platforms, uh, some of them are not regulated in Kenya. They are regulated uh, in places like uh, the US or London. You really need to dig so that uh, in case they were to disappear one day, they don't disappear with all your money. You, you, you know there's some level of protection. It's managing this because even banks go down. See, you know banks that have gone down in our country. Somebody may say, ah, you know, this and this bank went down. What are you trying to say? And they were regulated. In this world, what we do is try to eliminate risk. A good example as uh, we finish, uh, this is an interesting <laughs> uh, if you, if you, for those who come from Tana River, right? Uh, you know River Tana and uh, the, the crocodiles and stuff like that. Do you know you can decide to cross the river by uh, swimming across, right? And uh, by miracles, and there are people who do that, uh, you survive. But would I recommend to someone to cross that river by swimming? Of course not. Because maybe more than... Um, 80% of people who do that, they either lose their lives, right? But there are 10, uh, 10 or 20% who don't. What I'm trying to say, the investment methods where people succeed, but it's a very small group of people, but most people perish. And that's why it's not recommended. Not that you can't succeed. What we do in this world, we are trying to manage risk. The better you are at managing it, maybe the more wealth that you can accumulate. So ensure that they are licensed. I think that's the answer. I may not be able to tell you to whether to subscribe to it or not. And any other app out there is regulated by the right body. Just go down there and do your own research. You'll be able to have an answer. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much, Ruben. I think, um, you know, one hour just flies so so fast because we have a lot, a lot to cover. But it was just the second session that I was looking at tips. So we, again, I think the underlying point for Ruben to us is everything is a personal journey. So if you see Amakove buying, you know, properties or uh, buying, buying land or buying, you know, investment bonds, infrastructure bonds, that is because Amakove is walking her journey. So what Ruben is saying is that what is your journey? Have you evaluated the pros and cons? What is your end goal? What is your future? What is your past? What are you trying to achieve right now? I think that personal relationship is very, very important. And so last week and this week was basically giving you a contextual background towards investment. And for the next two, two weeks,
we are going to now hone in on tangible assets. So forget about the arts because those you can get, and, and I think he's mentioned this is our market is not that mature for investments in arts. Forget about infrastructure bonds because those you can get. So for the next two weeks that are coming, Thursday, 8 to 9 p.m., we're going to focus on our tangible assets. And tangible assets we, is where we're looking at Maguta Maguta. We're looking at generational wealth. We're looking at the pitfalls around land because land is one of the many, many investments that you're talking about. So we may have Ruben next, next Thursday. We may have someone else. I'll let you know in due course. Please ensure that you have signed up to our our series, four series that are sponsored by Username Investment Company. If you've not, you're missing out because with every sign up, you get a proper calendar, you know, uh, block so that you don't forget, number one. Number two, you get a link to an automatic email that comes 24 hours after the Thursday event that gives you the uploaded video um, recording of the past events, just in case you missed them, but also when you just want to go back to, you know, what did Ruben say about this and that, it's very, very important. But third, you get to connect to username, and username has contacts, whether it's on their website, whether it's on their social media pages, please contact them on that, and if you use the hashtag Amakove, you're able to get a specially dedicated team that's going to attend to you with regards to tangible assets like land. So stay tuned. Thank you very much, Ruben. You've given us tips. And I know that uh, webinar three, webinar four, we delve deeper into the tangible assets uh, bit of it. Username Investment Limited, a tradition of trust.